maybe making these videos was a mistake because now all you guys know what all my cards are, how my decks work, and how I play. So now when multiplayer happens, you guys are going to be able to perfectly block me and like counter me and, and beat me every single time and I'll never win a table turf battle again. Oh no. So last time we covered Sheldon, Gnarly, Eddie, and Jello Fleur. Today I want to specifically target Mr. Coco because I know he's given a lot of you guys trouble and he's given me a lot of trouble and I know exactly why and I want to like outline what you can do. I could pretty much do like a two hour seminar on Mr. Coco specifically, like how his cards work, what he does, where he's going to go, what, how to build a deck that counters him. It's, I could go on about Mr. Coco forever. He's given me so much pain and headache, but I forgive him. Because he, I love him because he's very cute. Like, look at him. Hi, hi. I heard there was a table turf battle with my name on it. I'm a thousand percent in. I hope you're ready to throw down because I'm all about this table turf life. Let's go. So, Mr. Coco, he... Oh, God. So, I'm going to start with a deck that's guaranteed to lose. It's my Yeehaw Baby, my general deck that works against everybody else except Mr. Coco. And I'm going to explain why. So, he plays on the same map as Jella Fleur. And that's for a very good reason, because all of his cards are enormous. And we've lucked out with this second draw here. So it's not that he specifically plays aggressively, it's that his cards are very aggressive. So like, what's gonna happen here is he's gonna go for the center, and then he's gonna go for the sides and block you off, trapping you in this little tiny zone. Check this out. <laughs> Oof. Okay. Always does this. Next move is going to go one of two ways. Either I block him off and he goes here and then down and around, or he's going to go from here straight down. Because I've got this sort of sticking out, I don't think he's going to go for that, so I'm going to play something here and see if I can completely block him off. Now, Mr. Coco's deck. The theme of his deck, oh my god, and of course he goes and ruins my whole video. <laughs> um, the theme of his deck isn't crabs, because there's only like two crabs, one being himself, the other being crab tank. His deck isn't shoes, though his cards do have a lot of shoes featured on them, I think that just might be a coincidence. The real theme of Mr. Coco's deck is giant cards that block you. That's the whole thing he does. Like... Now he's got me trapped in here. His next move is going to be right here to try and block me. So I'm going to try and go through here. All of his cards, all about blocking you. It doesn't matter. Look at his cards. They're enormous. They're always able to get through whatever if you have a general deck like what I'm using right here. Now to counter that, um, my god. It's, there's just so much to talk about. I'm all over the place with this. He has caused me so much pain. Um, what I'm gonna do, because he's suddenly so unpredictable, he's ruined my nice predictable video, is I'm gonna try to go up here. No, actually, he doesn't have big- all of his cards are huge. Again, I'm gonna be repeating that multiple times about how huge his cards are, because that is the whole thing. That's why he's so difficult, just because of his cards. Now, oh god, he plays like Sheldon, but he has better cards. I think my best bet is to try and block him off here while I still can. So I'm gonna go here, keep him out. He's gonna block me up top. Oh, <gasps> he isn't. Okay, we're good. You just wanna section off little zones for yourself to keep yourself safe. Because he's a coconut crab. And you know, if your points fall too far below, like look at this right now, his lead around turn eight He's pretty much always going to have a lead because of how large his cards are and if you're playing with a standard deck. Now again, this six small card, three medium cards, six small card rule that I've made up will not work against Mr. Coco because of again, his cards are so large. Every single problem you're going to have against Mr. Coco, the answer is it's because his cards are too big. So he's always going to have a lead if you're following the 636 structure. And if he starts, uh, if you start falling behind too much, it's over for you. You can't recover unless you build a very specific deck for that, which I will go over in, uh, after I lose to this guy. Um, so, like, look at this. 50 to 46, that's already bad news at turn 8. At any other character, this would be totally fine. We can catch up, no problem. But Mr. Coco, we can't. He's a coconut crab. 
If he sees you fall and hit the ground, he will eat you alive. He will eat you alive like Amelia Earhart and that's it, it's over. Oh my God, I'm getting so worked out. Okay, <laughs> let me just take a breath. So what you just wanna do is just block him off wherever you can. He's gonna play something long here because he doesn't have a lot of narrow cards that can get through here. So I feel like it's pretty safe if I just play something right here and block off that space for myself. Ah, of course, he draws his one smaller card. Okay, um, I'm gonna keep pushing this corner. And he also is managing to push the corner. Let's see if I can catch up. I really think I can this time. Um, as I was saying before, if you have long cards, like long cards with lots of reach, if you go back to my other video, take a look at my Get Blocked Nerd deck, that might be a good deck to play against Mr. Coco. Lots of long cards that will section off little areas for yourself, like much like what I've done in the corner here, down here. That would be safe. I think I have a pretty good um, area for myself right now. I'm gonna grab myself a special. So if you can't build your nice long deck, um, long card deck, the only other thing you can do is build a deck that's focused mainly on specials. Building up special points using special cards. Like, you know, you guys know what I mean when I talk about special points, right? The orange blocks that you have to surround to get, um, to act, to build up special. I mean, everything's called special in this game. I don't know what to call it, any, like anything else. Like, these are ultra stamps. The, the ultra stamp is, is the special card. Um, because... Like, it's special as in, like, in the main game. It's your special. It's your Ultra Stamps, your Tenta... Uh, Tacta Cooler, your Tenta Tech Missiles, your... What else is there? No, Tenta Missiles, sorry. Um, uh, what's another one? Booyah Bomb! That's a good uh, special uh, for cards. Because if you can build up a lot of special against Mr. Coco, you could be able to turn this around. And that's because... Hold on a second, let me just grab a special here. I should play this somewhere else, this is a bad move. Because double-edged sword with these giant, giant cards, it's gonna leave tons of open space for you to just take at the end of the game. Like, uh, I'm talking turn two, turn one, left. That's when you wanna start grabbing up all his points. N closing that gap, um, that he- that lead he has, like, I could play this right here and grab- how many points is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 points from him, um, completely unimpeded because there's no way he's gonna be able to block me because it's not like he's gonna have more special blocks than you unless you're playing mostly special cards. I need to find a better name than special cards. Like, you know, heavy- uh, uh, ultra stamp- I'm gonna start calling them 3 cost 12 pointers because that's the most descriptive way I can think of. Cause like, all of these special cards, they all cost 3 special to play on top of other cards. And they are all worth 12 points. So I think until I make up a new name, I'm just gonna keep calling them 3, three cost 12 pointers. Even though that's kind of a mouthful. So, you just wanna... If you can build up a deck that's mostly focused around building up special, I think you'd be okay. Ah, his other small card, Tentatech, with shoes on it. Coincidence or no, I don't know. Aw, oh, man, and that little bubble that I built for myself is too small. I do have another card that would fit. But I'm gonna keep focusing on building special for now, even though I'd be blocking off... Aw, oh, okay, I can put it here. His crab tank is the only 3 cost 12 pointer that he has. So it's totally okay if he plays it early. Like you you're you want to be wishing that he's playing it early. And man, I didn't get my my other card. Dang it. Okay. That's kind of screwed me. I'm going to lose this for sure now because there's no way I can get enough points. There's no point in putting This is the biggest card I can play unless I play my ultra stamp right now. See if we can turn this around. We still have our five points. And like I was saying, lots of empty spaces that you can just play whatever you want, whenever you want, and try to turn that around. Let's see if we can do that. Unless you play something small. 
Akaroka, yes! Oh, we've done it. We've done it. Okay. That only took 10 minutes of, of uh, explaining. My god. That was brutal. So again, just to recap, build a deck that's all long cards, or try to build up special. Ideally, if you have a lot of 3 cost 12 pointers that are long, maybe build up a deck mostly of those and cards that would be easy to build up specials with. So you can take all the points from the end, because there's not a... Unless you're building a deck that looks like Mr. Coco's, you are going to be behind in points pretty much the entire game. He's going to eat you alive if you let that happen again. Um, so I'm going to... No, no. I'm going to build a new deck. I want to show you how to counter him. Mr. Coco, you drive me insane. You are so difficult. So let's see if this deck fails now. Oh, not that one. Whoopsie. Oh, I keep pressing the wrong button. Okay, it's X. Table Surf Battle, card list, build a new deck. So I tried to start building one, um, but I want to change it. Uh, actually, no. Okay, let's, let's edit that. So I want to keep some small cards, but not this many small cards. Let's start from scratch, actually, just to show you how I think, start thinking about this. Start, first of all. So I would start by picking a bunch of long, big cards. So of course I'm gonna keep my E leader because it's perfect for getting into small areas. I'm going to keep my Hydra Splatling because it's perfect for going around, up and around cards. This guy is too compact. I don't want to keep him. I might put in Maws though because it is very tall. And then we can start putting in our specials. I have three. I've got Ink Storm, I've got Ultra Stamp, and I've got the Tactic Cooler. I think I'm gonna keep my Ultra Stamp for sure. And you know what? I'll just put an Ink Storm just for funsies. And then another long big card would probably be good. Actually, I might start going down to uh, some of the 11 -er pointers. I'll keep Tri Stringer. Did pretty okay. Um, Jet Squelcher is an interesting card that I just got. Let's try out that. Six tall. Let's get another nice long card. So he had a 96 gal. I'm going to put in a 96 gal. And now we can start putting in our slightly smaller cards. So by smaller, I'm going to still keep on picking long cards. Keep the stinger. Because I really wanted to do that one thing that I was trying to talk to you guys about. Which was go around. Okay, and now let's finish off with our small cards. And I like having my spot bomb first. I think this looks... Pretty okay. The total is 137. I think going around the 140, 150 range would be really good against Mr. Coco. Um, let's change the deck name to Ah! That's how I feel when I'm playing against Mr. Coco. And let's see if this works out. Not following my 636 th deck structure at all. It's making me very upset. But if this wins, uh, I'm going to be all in on that one. Okay, Mr. Coco, we're trying out our new deck. Let's see if he will counter it the way that I want him to counter it. Okay. I need to get some more cards still. We've got lots of nice long cards. I'm going to hold on to that even though I have my Ultra Stamp. It's okay. I have my E-Leader and I need that right away. So again, he's going to play in the center. Always does that every single time. And now if I can't block him, he's going to go off to the left and down. Yep, okay. So now I can predict that his next move will be right here. But because i rather have him blocked off rather than have him blocking me off, I'm gonna just put my Ink Storm in right away so I can get through. Okay, I'm safe. And start grabbing points like I was saying before. So, nine turns left, we have a little bit of a lead. He's gonna start turning that around very quickly. But I'm gonna try to keep up with my 996 gal. There he goes. He's gonna start going right through there. But that's okay, because I am going to go right through here, blocking him off completely. Alright. So far, so good. This is how I want this to go. I still have space for my Hydra Splatling right here. And now, 
he is all out of, play, um, of spaces. He can't play any more of his big cards. He's all out of big cards, pretty much. Now, he has his lead now. What I'm going to do is try to build up special. I don't know if I can. I can grab... I'm setting up two right now. Oh, boy. I just need three. That's all I need. An attack. Because ideally... I want to play right here in this big open patch of blue. And here's my three points. We haven't maintained a lead, but we're very close because of our card sizes are very big. This is how you want to be playing it. This is exactly how you want to be playing against Mr. Coco. I can build up a little more special to give myself some leeway in case I can't use my Ultra Stamp. And I know I have a lot of cards that are big left. Um, yeah, I just have one tiny card left. So I can special on now, use this instead of my other card, and get myself a free sp- uh, free spe- free special! Uh, where should I go? Right here? Free special. Eight points from him to me, and he passed, so this is- this is the best it's ever gone, ever. I cannot beat. A game this clean. Okay, special on, ultra stamp on, turn this around, plop it right down here, grab myself a bunch of points, and of course he's gonna use his crab. Please don't take too many points from me. I think I just lost that. It was going so well too. Can you believe that? I wasn't paying attention. Oh, oh thank goodness. Okay, we're still good. So that's Mr. Coco. I could keep going on. I could do an I could build another deck, but you know what? It's already been 16 minutes and I haven't eaten dinner yet. I've got to go cook something. I hate cooking. God. Okay, Mr. Coco. That is it for you. I'll do Harmony and Jed next time in a short video, but Mr. Coco, my god. If you want a part 2 to this, maybe I'll do a part 2. If you have any Mr. Coco questions, let me know because I love talking about Mr. Coco. Maybe I should put together a two-hour seminar. I don't know. That's Mr. Coco, and that's how to beat him. He is insane. He's beaten me so many times. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. <laughs>